Greetings and welcome to another C Sharp coding session. Um, we are working on a Minecraft server launcher. Um, Wednesday, when I started streaming, um, the powers that be decided that um, my internet connection should go the way of the dinosaurs, and it was basically dead most of the day. So. Um, that's why I didn't stream on Wednesday. I do apologize, but it was kind of up to the dark side of the force to um, figure out when I could get online again. Uh, I eventually did, but um, by that time it was getting so late, so I decided to simply just uh, skip it. Um, anyways, um, we uh, messed around with uh, building some schedule handling uh, last time around and um, ended up getting a decent uh, schedule editor with uh, built-in uh, sorting options and stuff. Um, one thing that we didn't implement uh, last time was um, the ability to remove schedules. Um, and uh, of course also the ability to save and load schedules. Uh, and that's something that we will definitely be addressing today along with a couple of other things. Um, so good to see you Sir Pinwheel. Um, always nice to see familiar names. Um, let's uh, see what we can get done. Um, I did add in a couple of things during uh, the initial 10 minutes last time. <laughs> um, so I'll uh, uh, quickly go through um, the minor changes that were made. Um, <clears throat> for us to be able to um, correctly store uh, schedule information along with um, each individual uh, server instance, um, we um, let's see, where is it? Uh, that would be the schedule profile, uh, this one. Um, schedule, schedules contain the host ID and um, um, the time of day it should trigger and what kind of schedule it is, whether it's just a restart or uh, an actual backup. Um, so there's not much in it, um, but uh, one uh, addition I made was that I added um, um, another entry to the server profile, which contains uh, a list of these uh, schedules. Um, <coughs> uh, by adding in the uh, schedule profiles uh, along with the server profiles, we can uh, correctly store them along with um, uh, each individual uh, server profile, so we don't get the schedules mixed up. Um, alternatively, we could um, run a separate list uh, and then just uh, cross-connect them, but I figured it would be easier to just um, store them along with the server profiles in terms of writing them to disk. That way we don't have to um, keep two separate lists in our config object. Um, so uh, we'll see how it works out and if it becomes a huge problem we can always change it. That's the beauty of code. Um, okay, so far so good. Uh, the second thing that um, I managed to get done before the stream died uh, was I started writing a bit of code to um, <coughs> actually save uh, the schedules to disk um, and of course we also need to modify the um, loading options uh, or loading code so we can um, correctly uh, load in the schedules from the config file. And just to recap the uh, configuration file quick, um, it looks like this, uh, standard ini format. Um, as we can see, uh, we've got a counter that tells us how many profiles we've got in here and each uh, grouping of a server profile <coughs> is then uh, suffixed with um, uh, the value of the loop counter. Uh, so it becomes profile 0, profile 1, and so on. Um, 
in terms of um, saving stuff um, to ensure that we don't end up with orphaned data in the uh, schedule um, uh, sorry in the in the configuration file um, I decided to uh, start by killing off any uh, potentially existing pre-existing uh, schedule sections um, or groups um, and then uh, basically recreate them uh, as needed um, by doing that uh, we can um, uh, fairly easily uh, um, make sure that any profiles that might have been deleted uh, as uh, um, uh, through interaction with the dialogues um, that they correctly get removed from the configuration file without us having to manually go through each individual entry uh, and removing them in the config file as well. Um, so it's just a matter of um, uh, trying to get um, uh, the data synced up correctly uh, without too much hassle. Um, okay, so uh, <clears throat> let's uh, have a look at this one again. Um, at the moment um, the schedule dialog basically only deals with um, managing uh, the different schedules, letting us uh, configure them, um, but uh, we don't really have any way of um, putting schedules into the dialog and we don't really have any way of um, uh, uh, getting those schedules out of the dialog again. Um, for um, that purpose we do actually have the um, um, custom property which is basically just an array of uh, scheduled profiles um, that would allow us to um, now that we have uh, sorry this one now that we have as part of the server profile itself a similar array uh, we would have the ability to uh, basically just pass that to the dialog before it's shown um, and uh, likewise uh, retrieve that array uh, once the dialog is closed um, and that will then make sure that we get those schedules uh, moved around the way they're supposed to. <coughs> now as part of um, the dialog handling uh, we also need to um, sync up uh, the profiles with the um, accompanying host ID or uh, server host ID uh, so that the schedule manager can correctly uh, identify which um, um, schedule triggered. Uh, so that's something that we need to uh, put in there as well. Um, before we do that though Let's um, uh, do a quick run through here and make sure that we have all the information um, synced up. We do. Uh, we still need to do the um, remove function. Um, so I'm kind of thinking uh, we should start with that so we don't forget. Um, that way we can close down the schedule editor and um, forget about it until we need to make some kind of change in the future. Um, okay, so um, in order for the remove button to uh, start working, um, we need to make sure that we actually have a selected entry. Um, that should be fairly easy since um, the um, editing group down here uh, will basically not be visible um, um, unless a schedule is selected uh, either by creating a new one or by uh, us selecting one from the list. So by the time the click event of the remove button is raised um, we can be fairly certain that we actually have a proper uh, entry. Um, so um, uh, if we go up here and um, do a quick check um, Let's see, that would be this one. Uh, 
uh, this one tells us that we have uh, a specific entry uh, selected in the list, which of course uh, directly uh, correlates with um, an actual server profile. So that's what we need to do as a check down here. So if we have a quick look at this one, uh, selected index, if it's greater than negative one, that means one is selected. Um, it's basically not needed since we have a bunch of other me uh, mechanisms in place to uh, ensure that um, uh, the remove button is only active when there is uh, a reference to a pre-existing uh, scheduled profile, but um, you never know. Uh, sometimes thing, things can end up becoming desynced, and if that happens, then it's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, we don't want our program to um, crash out for some random reason that we can't catch. So, um. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Um, better safe than sorry. All right. So, if uh, a schedule is selected, then um, we should probably ask the user whether uh, he or she actually wants to delete this entry. So um, let's do that. Um, we'll do that by means of a message box. Um, and uh, put in title, uh, some kind of question here. Um, you are about to remove um, the Ah, actually, why don't we build a proper message for it? Yeah, let's do that. String, put that here, and then add that in this uh, schedule, question mark, and we'll need some buttons, and we just need a yes and no, um, and then we'll see if we can get a question mark. There we go. Uh, for some odd reason, they um, uh, is no longer recommended because it does not clearly represent a specific type of message, and because the phrasing of a message as a question could apply to any message type. Um, no idea why they uh, they've got this in here because <laughs> um, it's basically been in here for a very long time. Um, uh, in any case, uh, we'll select that and hope for the best um, and then we'll see if we get a yes response here there we go uh, this dialog will um, put up whatever message we build um, asked the title question remove the schedule uh, put a yes no button on there and uh, hopefully a question mark um, so if the user responds with yes, then we'll go ahead and remove the entry. Okay, so um, let's get a message put in here. Um, you are about to remove the... Um, and then we need to figure out if this schedule is a restart or a um, backup uh, schedule. So. Um, we'll grab the, um, let's see, if the uh, schedule is, uh, the current schedule is um, a backup, um, then we'll add backup, and otherwise we'll add, whoops, there we go, otherwise we'll add uh, restart and then um, schedule for um, and then we'll put in uh, the time of day and if memory serves we should have something that can um, pad a zero that we do so um, we'll add that in pad zero that would then be the schedule at um, uh, event hour and the event 
minutes. Uh, there we go. Event minute. Um, and then we'll add just for the sake of making it look better. Um, are you sure you wish to remove this schedule? Question mark. Not an equal sign. There we go. So now the um, message box will uh, show up a message that uh, fits what kind of schedule this is and also show uh, what time of day it's supposed to trigger on. Um, ask the question, are you sure you want to remove this? Um, if the user selects yes, um, then we'll go ahead and remove it. <coughs> now, um, there are uh, options available for the message boxes which can force it to say um, pre-select the no button, uh, should we want to, um, um, by means of um, um, uh, binary adding um, uh, the um, uh, uh, button selection, um, like so. Uh, actually, um, it would be the default button, um, which would then be button 1 for yes and button 2 for no. Um, not going to mess with that, there's no point, um, because it's not all that vital. Uh, to keep track of um, such things, but there are options available to do so. Um, when the user selects yes to remove a profile, we of course need to get rid of it, um, since we already have the uh, index number for this one specific event uh, by means of the list box. Um, we should be able to remove it fairly easy. Um, and let's see if this uh, does not have any means of removing it, so we'll have to come up with a way to get rid of it. Now, um, I already created a um, nice little um, array remove snippet um, a while back, so I'm just going to go grab that quick. Um, snippets, array, remove. So we'll grab this one. There we go. I know it's not perfect, but for this purpose it works. Uh, I'll go through it and uh, explain what's going on. Um, there we go. Array, remove. Stuff it in here. There we go. Okay. So. Um, basically, this one takes um, an array of any kind um, and um, um, an index that uh, points to which particular entry uh, should be removed. Then it creates a um, temporary list uh, or a temporary array of the same kind, um, minus one, of course, because we're removing one and then it copies over uh, the two parts that uh, we need to keep uh, and thereby removes it and finally um, um, uh, copies uh, the new uh, array back to the original one. Um, so fairly straightforward. Um, this can be further uh, improved by um, basically just moving um, uh, the remaining entries uh, in the array, um, one up in the existing one, and then resizing it uh, afterwards. Um, and it's something that I should definitely do at some point. Um, for the moment this works, so we'll use that. Um, so, right here we have the array, which is our schedule uh, list, and we will then uh, simply just remove the selected entry um, by fetching the selected index from the list box. There we go. Remove the selected schedule from the list. And after this we need to 
um, close down the uh, schedule editor, um, which for which we have a method. So um, we'll kill these, uh, uh, deselect the the entry that we just removed, and then close the editor. So we'll basically do the same thing as this, and that goes down here. So. Um, actually, we should probably put it inside the um, uh, right here. Yeah, let's put it in here. That's where it belongs. Whoops. Uh, no, I'm Danish. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Um, Odin son. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Uh, there we go. That should take care of um, schedule removal. Okay, so um, now that we have the ability to remove them, we can, um, for the most part, call this schedule editor uh, more or less done. Um, <coughs> the remaining stuff that we need to do with it is um, um, stuff that has uh, has to happen in the main form in um, the um, schedule editing button. Um, we need to pass the existing list of uh, schedules uh, to the dialog before we show it, and then we need to retrieve that list uh, from the schedule dialog before we dispose of it. Um, and in doing so, we also need to um, um, inform our configuration object to uh, go study, um, uh, sorry, go um, save the uh, changes that um, uh, occurred. Um, so let's have a look at that, uh, which should be in here somewhere. There we go. Oh, actually. I think I forgot to remove that um, to-do note. No, I did get rid of it. Cool. Get rid of these. There we go. All right, so this would be the schedule button um, on the main form. And as we can see, we call up the schedule dialog. We tell it where the server path is. Um, that's strictly for the purpose of uh, pre-initializing the uh, folder uh, browse dialog with um, the home path of the server uh, to make it a little easier to um, put backups uh, basically where uh, the server is. Um, before we show the dialog though, we kind of need to pass it um, the existing list of uh, schedules, so we'll do that, um, which would be the schedule profiles, and we'll grab that directly from the config object. Profiles, Profile Selection Index, and then get the uh, Schedules. There we go. This takes care of uh, pass the existing um, schedules to the dialog. And in a similar fashion, we need to retrieve it, um, uh, the uh, schedules from the dialog, and uh, we may have to um, do this a different way. Um, dialog dot uh, schedule profiles. Yes. Cannot modify the return value of um, because it's not a variable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know. Okay. So we'll do a. Um, Quick uh, server profile um, profile equals um, this one. There we go, and then we'll do profile dot schedules instead, and then we'll put it back. There we go. Uh, selection index equals profile done. Only thing missing here is to place a call to the config object to force save the um, profile changes. Um, we do need to um, uh, change the 
uh, or check that the um, profiles property of the config object um, also updates the uh, changed flag uh, to make sure that we can actually force it uh, to save. Um, so we'll go do that quick. Uh, it should. Um, I believe we did. We put it in there a long time ago, but um, just to be on the safe side, let's make sure. Um, there we go, and yes, we force a change uh, flag to be raised, um, which will allow the save method to um, actually write the configuration to disk. So that will be the next step. Um, uh, so, um, to make sure that uh, we don't end up with orphaned data, uh, we'll start by killing off any um, scheduling list uh, that might exist in the config file, and then we'll uh, start building it up. Um, uh, <coughs> let's see. Um, so, get rid of this. Um, so for each profile uh, we have a separate group um, that fits in with um, the loop counter uh, as specified by the total profile count and we'll basically just replicate this but uh, name the group um, schedule and then uh, the counter. And inside that one uh, we'll uh, start by um, putting in how many schedules are in there, and then we'll start listing all of them. Um, for the schedules, uh, we have, um, let's grab it quick, uh, schedule profile. Um, we need to make sure that we only save the relevant data, which would be um, the event time. Uh, whether it is a backup feature or a re uh, sorry backup schedule or a restart schedule, if it's a backup schedule, then we also need to store the backup path. Um, but we basically don't need to store this if uh, it's just a re restart schedule. So um, we shall see how we can get away with uh, setting this up. Um, at the moment, we don't exactly have uh, the means to, uh, say, uh, store um, a boolean value. So um, uh, we could go about this uh, a couple of different ways. We could build a method that handles uh, converting a boolean value into a string of true and false, uh, or uh, we can simply just um, use an actual um, text label that describes uh, whether this is um, a restart or a backup schedule. So I think we'll just go uh, go with that uh, setup. Um, so we definitely need to add in a, um, um, a set value. Uh, we need to specify the group we want to store it in. I'll grab the counter. Um, then we need to uh, specify the key name. Uh, for this we'll use um, count and then we will uh, specify um, whoops, the schedules uh, counter. Uh, no, sorry, this is a um, um, an array so we'll use length and then to string. There we go. That saves how many uh, schedules are in this particular uh, profile. Um, and then from here we will uh, start writing those uh, schedules uh, to the group. And to do that we'll loop through them. And since these are schedules we'll use s less than our uh, schedule count. There we go. Um, so, um, how are we going to store the timestamp? Um, well, um, what if we just grab a page from the schedule dialog and borrow a copy of um, the path zero? There we go. And then put that up here, like so. 
um, it basically just converts uh, the passed integer value into a string and then pr uh, prefixes it with a zero if um, it only has one digit in it. Um, so uh, let's get the write the schedule uh, time. So we'll uh, set a value set value <laughs> um, in this group and uh, that would then be the um, um, time and then we'll specify for uh, this particular schedule uh, in a similar fashion as the groups are done uh, we'll simply just uh, um, suffix the um, uh, counter to keep them separated and then we'll uh, add in um, the actual time itself um, pretty much in the same way we did for um, the question box when removing them. So event hour uh, like so, add in a colon and then uh, the minutes which we should get right there. Uh, this makes sure that we store <coughs> um, the time as uh, if we say 4.30 in the morning. Um, this is what it will look like um, in the configuration file. So when we uh, load it up, uh, we will get a 0, 4, colon, 3, 0 um, as a string, which we can then split and convert into uh, the proper time. Uh, next up, we need to figure out what kind of uh, schedule this is. So um, write the schedule type. Uh, for this, um, we of course need to figure out what type it is. So we'll do a check and figure out whether it's a backup event or uh, if it's a restart event. Okay, so if it is a backup event, we will store this as um, schedule <coughs> um, time um, counter <coughs> and then we'll do type and the counter for the schedules and then we'll simply just mark this as backup. There we go. And since it's a backup schedule, we also need to uh, store the um, uh, selected path for it. Uh, so we'll do that. Um, path. Uh, the counter, so we can match them up. And then we need to get the path from the uh, schedule, which would be Disabon. There we go. And if it is a <coughs> restart schedule, then we'll simply change uh, type from backup to restart. So um, this tells us that uh, we need to look for um, backup uh, and restart in the type uh, key to figure out which kind of uh, schedule this is. Um, there we go, nice and easy. Um, this, By doing it um, this way, uh, initially removing it, we kill any um, potentially orphaned data uh, and then we rebuild all of it from scratch uh, and um, in doing so we always ensure that um, the schedules are uh, sorted by time of day in um, the configuration file, uh, just like the dialog shows them. Uh, so we should always get them in that order. Uh, unless, of course, somebody decides to um, uh, actually go into the configuration file and change them in here, in which case they, of course, will not match. Um, uh, or sorry, they will not be um, sorted by time of day. Uh, in reality, it doesn't really matter all that much um, because the schedule manager checks um, for individual specific times um, and tries to match them up with um, 
um, whatever schedule might uh, exist at that time. Um, we're just doing uh, all of the sorting um, to make it easier for us as human beings to keep track of stuff. Okay, so that was the save. Um, this um, now contains the full uh, schedule stuff. Um, since we don't really need to uh, store the um, um, oh, this one, uh, the server host ID as it is assigned uh, whenever a server instance goes live, um, we definitely don't want to save that ID to disk um, because it will it sh it could potentially change a lot of times um, during the lifespan of the application. Uh, so we'll uh, leave that out. It's not particularly needed. Um, and um, next up, we need to uh, modify the load config um, to be able to handle this as well. So um, we shall get that done. Um, we will, however, during the load, need to do uh, things a little bit differently uh, because we kind of need to add the uh, schedules to the server profile before we throw it in the profiles list. Um, so instead of uh, just adding it there, um, we'll do um, a local server profile um, um, and then move this up here like so and then uh, reference this instead. The reason we need to do this is because we also need to um, add up the schedules. So first off, uh, we'll see if we can actually get um, an, a schedule count. Um, um, since we will not have any um, schedule groups um, from the pre-existing uh, profile, uh, configuration uh, stuff, um, we definitely need to make sure that um, we actually have a, a um, schedules uh, group um, and so the quick and easy way of doing that is basically just to try and fetch a count. Now uh, fix int um, will make sure that uh, we at least get a zero back uh, since we're basically referencing a counter. Uh, that means uh, if uh, we end up getting um, a zero, then there are no profiles defined and we basically don't need to do any further work. So schedule count equals, um, and that will then be the fix int, um, and we'll try and get uh, the schedule um, for this profile schedule group for this profile and then reference the count key um, which would match um, this one um, and then we check whether it's greater than zero if it is then we'll loop through and load up all the um, individual profiles now for um, um, for the timestamp, um, we are storing it um, just like the remove dialog uh, specified. Uh, so we need to put in some extra code to uh, split this up uh, correctly so we can put it back in the scheduled profile the way it's meant to be. Um, let's loop through here and try and load up those uh, schedules. And that will then be the schedule count, um, like so. And uh, then we will start by uh, grabbing the timestamp, uh, get value, and that would then be from the schedule group of the current profile. Um, we need to fetch the um, time key. And of course, uh, we also need to suffix it with the um, counter for the schedules, not the profiles. There we go. Um, to make sure that we potentially get a valid 
uh, timestamp um, will check that it has a length of uh, 5 uh, because um, um, the timestamp is made up of um, uh, two uh, numbers, a colon and two numbers, that makes 5. And then we can also check that um, the um, uh, first, second, third position um, is a colon. It has to be a colon uh, for the timestamp to be valid. And only in this case will we actually continue processing this particular um, schedule. All right. Um, the reason for doing this is because we don't know what uh, kind of stupidity um, uh, people can come up with when they uh, decide to go mess with a config file somewhere. Uh, someone could easily go in and uh, remove the timestamp and type in um, noon, for example. Um, that would then invalidate uh, the timestamp because noon is four letters instead of five characters. Uh, so that takes care of that. Uh, since uh, noon doesn't contain a colon, uh, that would further invalidate that schedule. Uh, so we can kind of um, sort out any um, incorrect data uh, by doing it this way. And since the timestamp potentially is uh, not valid, then we won't bother trying to figure out whether it's a restart schedule or um, a backup schedule and those, those keys um, just uh, doesn't make any sense to uh, trying to do that. So this just takes care of um, um, managing uh, that the timestamp is valid. Is this timestamp valid? All right, so next up we uh, need to s um, uh, split um, the values. So we'll do that quick. Um, we'll do parts, do the timestamp, and then simply just not split. Oops, <laughs> split by means of the colon. There we go. This ensures that we um, should get two parts, again just to be sure. Um, this should now be... Um, uh, if it's a proper timestamp we will only get two parts. Um, if it's an incorrect timestamp, uh, like for example uh, 0 colon 1 colon 2, uh, that still makes up five characters, um, that would potentially invalidate uh, on this check, but um, you kind of get the picture. Um, Alright, so uh, since we now have two parts, we can then do a split, uh, or sorry, a conversion. Um, we'll do the fix int on the first part, which should be the hours, and we'll do a fix int on the second part, which um, should be the minutes. And then we can do a quick check. Um, for that check we need to look at the schedule dialog quick, um, because uh, the schedule dialog um, basically determines what kind of minutes uh, that we find acceptable. Um, so 0, 15, 30 and 45 are acceptable values. And for hours we need to check that uh, it's between um, and including uh, 0 and tw uh, 23. So if those are valid, um, hour greater than or equal to 0 and hour less than 24, and um, no, actually we'll just go with this for now and then we'll um, yeah we'll do another check here if um, minutes is 0 or minutes is 15 or minutes is 30 or it's 45 then those are acceptable values and we'll do the rest of it all right, so now that we know that we have a valid timestamp, we can at least to some extent assume that the rest of this schedule might be um, valid data. Um, time of day is kind of the most important part, so um, 
here we will now um, uh, resize the um, schedule list in the profile, uh, add one entry to it, um, plus one, and then we'll um, no, actually we'll keep this for now. Uh, we'll do this as the last bit. I will restore the schedule data. Okay, um, when we reach uh, this point, we have a valid time uh, for the schedule. There we go. Uh, next up, we need to figure out whether um, this is a restart schedule or uh, if it's a backup schedule. Now, um, the uh, quick and dirty way of doing this to um, ensure that we have a fallback um, uh, schedule type um, is to simply just uh, check um, the first letter of the value in the um, uh, type key. Um, if uh, we get a B there, uh, then uh, it's configured as a backup, and if we don't get a B there, we will simply do a fallback and force it to become a restart schedule instead. So if somebody messes up uh, by typing something different in um, the scheduled type in the config file, then it will automatically uh, default back to become becoming a restart schedule, um, which basically renders this particular type um, um, open to become whatever. Uh, so we could even um, <coughs> Uh, put in something like uh, container ship or whatever, and it would still fall back to become a restart event. Um, again, one of those uh, things we never know what people do, uh, so um, we'll put in some um, proper checks to make sure that um, we at least have some measure of um, doing a fallback, um, and in doing so, um, we effectively remove any kind of, um, uh, how should I put this, um, um, we remove any kind of obstacles uh, that uh, would potentially uh, demand of us that we request the user's help to figure out what this is. Um, uh, the user may not uh, know that his config file is, has been corrupted by, say, uh, some kind of virus attack or whatever, um, and then, oh, I can't remember what uh, that particular schedule was, um, I don't know, figure it out program. Um, that's basically the, the attitude that um, people very often um, assume when something weird happens. So we'll do that, do that for them. Okay, let's go. So let's... Um, fetch the schedule type from the um, config file and for this we need to specify the uh, group that we want to load from and um, the key so we'll get that and then just to um, um, get things in a format that we can more easily and quickly use. We'll trim any spaces that might be there and then we will force it to become lowercase uh, characters. Um, so, if the f um, uh, schedule type uh, has a length greater than zero, uh, this is to prevent any kind of index out of bound crashes. If we assume there's something in there and um, a person deleted uh, the text for this key, then the key is basically empty, uh, which means the uh, string will be empty. So we'll um, do a check to make sure that it actually has some kind of data in it before we try to reference the first character. Um, if this is a B, then uh, we assume that this is a backup schedule. Um, in all other cases, um, if the schedule type starts with a B, we assume it's a backup schedule.
otherwise we'll force a restart schedule. So my fingers don't want to play today. <laughs> there we go. Um, okay, so by doing it um, with a simple if statement here, um, we have created a setup where um, we will only accept uh, this schedule as a backup schedule if um, the first character in the value of the schedule type is a B. So in all other cases, <coughs> <clears throat> if somebody types something else in there, um, we will force uh, this schedule to become a restart schedule by default. Uh, thereby, we allow people to um, basically go into the config file, delete the, uh, the value of the schedule type, um, and thereby force it to become um, a restart schedule. Uh, they could even remove the type key altogether uh, from the config file and it would still force it to become a restart schedule, even though uh, the schedule type is not uh, really specified. So it's a fallback to ensure that we, we have some measure of control over what kind of schedule we are attempting to load here. Now, if somebody went in and typed uh, some other keyword in the schedule type, um, having it configured as a backup schedule before, um, that would mean that we will eventually just delete um, the path key, um, which means the path will be lost, um, but better safe than sorry, um, and keep things in a way where we can still control the flow of data even though we might end up having some um, weirdo trying to see if he can crash our application by changing the contents of the config file. Um, that does happen. I've seen it time and time again, so um, better safe than sorry. All right, so if um, this is a uh, backup schedule, then we should most likely uh, try and see if we can um, um, store the path. So uh, we'll do a backup path here quick. Um, let's see if we can fetch that from the config file. So that would be a get value, the schedule for this profile, of course, and we'll get the path for this schedule. There we go. Uh, uh, trim any spaces that might be in there. We don't know. Um, and then from here, uh, we should probably check uh, whether this um, path is potentially valid. Um, so first off, uh, we'll check that we actually did um, get some kind of data in here. And then we'll check that um, the second um, character is a colon. The reason for doing that is because a path um, always starts with the drive followed by a colon as an indicator of an actual drive reference and then the next uh, part will always be a backslash. Uh, since we're on uh, a Microsoft file system, this doesn't change. It hasn't in the past uh, 35 years, so <laughs> good chance it won't ch change anytime soon. Um, so far so good. Um, now we also need to um, code for the eventuality that um, the path that's specified is potentially invalid. Uh, so uh, if this if statement fails, then we will force it to um, uh, fall back to a restart schedule. Uh, so by doing, uh, let's see, um, actually we will update the schedule type right here to become backup because then we can do a check later and if um, the stored path doesn't seem to be uh, useful so we'll default back to a restart event uh, schedule there we go and quick and easy way of doing that for us here is just to set this uh, schedule to restart. There we go. If the backup path here is valid, then um, 
actually we'll move that down here. There we go. Uh, set the schedule type to backup since we got a pot potentially valid path. There we go. And down here we'll force a re restart schedule. So that's basically this guy right here. And then here we'll do a quick check and then actually do the uh, data storage. Oh, we'll do that down here. Switch schedule type. Uh, switch is uh, similar to a um, if statement, except um, it basically only processes uh, the one that matches. Uh, so overall it is always faster to do a switch. Um, some argue that doing a switch for two values is um, uncalled for um, preferences, I guess. There we go. And restart. And there we go. Alright, so if it is a backup, uh, then we will um, um, add a backup uh, schedule, uh, which would be the length minus one equals new uh, scheduled profile. And here we have a number of different um, options for setting it up. And this would be the one that we need. So since this is a pre-existing schedule and we don't know the server host ID as of yet, uh, we'll simply specify negative one to indicate that it hasn't been referenced. Then we'll add in the hour and the minute and the backup path. And that's it. And for the restart event, um, which of course references the last um, entry in the array, uh, we'll add in one without the backup path and thereby forcing it to become a restart um, ske uh, schedule. Um, hour and minute. There we go. Okay, so um, um, one could ask why I didn't just assume that um, the schedule count we got uh, was correct uh, and then simply um, um, pre initialize the uh, schedules array uh, to the count. Uh, the reason I didn't do that was because um, I wanted to make sure that the data that we load from the config file is actually valid. Uh, so only in the instance where um, a schedule, um, the data for a schedule is actually valid, uh, will a new entry be added to the schedules list. Uh, this is simply to be able to filter out any uh, schedules that might have been become tainted or changed or um, corrupted somehow. Um, a lot of things can happen. Um, <clears throat> some users have a tendency to try and see if they can um, get applications to crash by um, uh, basically uh, corrupting um, their configuration files on purpose. Um, in this case they won't succeed because we uh, have built uh, the code to account for that. And if um, a schedule uh, has been corrupted um, it will simply be ignored and uh, in that process automatically removed. Um, unless of course um, the timestamp um, become um, turns out to be valid uh, then um, we could potentially just end up um, converting, uh, say, a backup uh, schedule into a restart schedule, because that is our fallback. Um, so that takes care of um, loading and saving schedules um, to and from uh, our config setup. So next up, I guess um, it's time to see if we can um, do a run on this add in a schedule here and there and see if it gets written to disk the way it's supposed to. So let's um, put up a schedule here. Um, let's say that we need this to restart at 1330 and it's just a restart. 
So we'll do that, and then we'll see. Well, nothing crashed, so that at least is a good thing. Um, and we'll go check the configuration. And it says that it has been modified, so load it up, and we'll see. And here we go. Nice. We now have one schedule for server profile zero, which is the vanilla server. It stores the correct timestamp and it sets it to restart. Um, now we'll add a uh, restart and a um, backup schedule to um, the other uh, profile and see if that gets stored correctly. So let's see. Um, we want to have a restart at, uh, say, 1800, um, like so, and then we want a backup, a daily backup, to take place at 7.30 in the morning, for example. Perform a backup, and we'll put that down here somewhere. Um, let's see, do we have a backup folder? No, we don't, so we'll make one. Backups, there we go. We don't have the backup feature yet. Uh, it's um, something we'll work on very soon. Um, but uh, at least here we can specify the schedule uh, and save it. There we go. And um, close the dialog and then do a recheck. And something went wrong because nothing changed. So. Let's see if this, it still contains the setup. Uh, it just didn't um, save anything for some reason. So we will need to figure out why that happened. Um, to do so, we will um, uh, not go in here, no. Um, kill this one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, nothing changed. All right, so um, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Uh, that would be uh, in here. Uh, this setup, uh, we will do a quick breakpoint there, and then run again and see what happens. Okay, that uh, event um, schedule got loaded correctly. Um, we'll leave that. And then we'll go and edit these and set them up and then um, uh, do a debug session and figure out exactly why it's not uh, saving these the way it's supposed to. So I s think I said 7.30. There we go. Back up. Pointing to the modded instance. The backups. There we go. Save it. Get sorted correctly. Close the dialog and then we'll see what happens. Um, so that would be in here somewhere. Well, it turns out the changed flag wasn't updated for some reason. Um, and why did that not get updated? That would be in the properties up here somewhere. Uh, there. Um, it probably didn't get changed because, um, that's actually a good question. Hmm. That is kind of weird. Oh well. Um, well, then I guess we'll have to force it. So, to force it, um, we'll cheat a little bit. Uh, we will do an overload of this one. That accepts. Um, a force. So, um, if changed or force save, then save the config. There we go. Saves um, any changes made to the server profiles list or for 
resources and save to disk. There we go. Whether to force a save to disk. Like so. And then we can simply just specify true here and that forces a save. Alright, let's check the schedule here. Still there. Um, do the schedules here. Uh, 1800. Uh, restart, yes. And another one for 730. Uh, doing a backup of a uh, modded server into the backups folder right there. And save this. And then we will trash it. And now we should have an update. There we go. <coughs> And as you can see, um, the type is now stored as backup, the path got stored as well, and the second schedule is right there. So, we now have options to um, load and save the schedules. Um, we'll do a um, quick restart of the program uh, just to make sure that the uh, actual schedule loading stuff uh, works perfectly. Uh, that schedule is right, and these schedules are right. So, we now have a fully implemented uh, schedule setting, uh, editing, uh, removal, uh, build up uh, stuff for our um, server profiles, and they correctly stick with uh, whichever uh, server profile was selected. All right, um, do a quick uh, coffee, nice. Um, so now that we are able to save and load schedules, um, we're also able to um, remove any schedules we don't want anymore. And we've uh, checked and seen that um, schedules are correctly saved to disk and correctly loaded from disk. So, for the most part, um, the scheduled stuff is more or less done. The thing remaining is to uh, work out um, some way of um, updating the schedule manager, uh, which um, is the one that um, handles uh, checking the um, uh, time of day uh, up against um, uh, the, the uh, uh, schedule profiles that we've got. Um, so we kind of need a way to uh, have uh, any changes that are made to schedules um, synchronized into the schedule manager. Um, so it can remove schedules that are no longer valid um, and add new schedules in that might have been um, uh, added to um, uh, a server profile somewhere. And um, we actually have to do that kind of synchronization uh, in a couple of different locations. Um, one of them would be at uh, basically uh, the application startup time and one would be uh, in the um, schedule configuration. Uh, so if we modify a schedule somewhere, we kind of need to tell the schedule manager, hey, um, there might be a change in here, um, figure out uh, what matches and what doesn't. Um, so uh, to take care of these particular issues for us, um, I think that we will do another uh, helper method. So um, let's see, the schedule manager is right there. Um, since this goes with um, uh, the schedule manager itself, uh, I think we'll just put it in here. So <coughs> let's get that um, in here. We'll call it. Um, Da, 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 da. Um, um, yeah, we'll just call it uh, update schedule manager. 
that's fairly straightforward. Um, and since uh, we um, basically have multiple different um, server profiles um, with potentially multiple schedules in each, um, we kind of need to loop through all of the profiles and sync them up with the schedule manager itself. Um, so let's see what kind of options we have available on this thing. Do we have anything that lets us synchronize them? Uh, not really, so uh, we should probably um, see if we can work that out somehow. Okay. Um, yeah, it's definitely something we need to add to the uh, schedule manager before we do that though. Um, we will... Um, I'm just keeping track of what needs to be done. Uh, we need to update the uh, host ID, um, this one, um, for all of the uh, schedules. Um, so that's something that we'll do in here. Do, um, update the um, server host ID for all schedules. Um, synchronize each uh, ske schedule with the uh, schedule manager. There we go. All right. So let's have a look at the schedule manager quick. Um, these are basically identical to um, uh, the normal ones, except uh, in here we have a, a few more control flags to f properly maintain the schedules, and we are not exactly specifying the um, uh, backup path in here because um, it's irrelevant for the schedule manager itself. So no point in put putting it in here. Um, collapse these. Um, that's the stuff there. Um, we have an add method um, which allows us to add a schedule to the schedule manager but we don't exactly have a remove method and we don't exactly have a um, uh, a way to say clear all the um, uh, schedules. We don't have a way to um, basically tell it to uh, um, check whether this particular schedule exists uh, within the schedule manager already um, and find any uh, potentially orphaned um, schedules that might be in here. Um, so um, there are a couple of different ways that we can go about this but one thing that we definitely need to keep in mind is that um, the user could potentially uh, change the timestamp uh, for a specific um, uh, schedule profile. Uh, so if, for example, uh, we already synchronized a restart at 8 in the morning and that is changed to say um, uh, 7.30 instead, then um, uh, if we simply loop through and compare uh, the existing schedules, uh, we could end up having um, either a an orphaned um, schedule or um, end up having duplicates. Uh, so that's something we definitely don't want. Um, so uh, the uh, quick and easy way of um, going through this would potentially just be to clear all of the existing schedules in here and re-add all of them. Um, since we're only running a few uh, profiles with potentially uh, a few uh, schedule um, profiles per uh, server profile, um, it well, it wouldn't end up becoming a whole lot that would have to be added and re-added. Uh, so I think we'll just um, do the quick and easy way and um, just add in a method to uh, clear all of the schedules in the schedule manager. So we'll just do a clear um, like so. Um, and since none of these um, schedule entries are 
uh, hooked into any kind of mechanism except uh, something that loops through um, those um, uh, lists, um, we should be able to fairly easily um, um, clear them and then uh, let it do its thing. Uh, so just to uh, recap quick, um, monitor schedules, the only thing it does is loop through the schedules uh, and check them. And that's basically it. Uh, so down here we will simply just um, um, I wonder if we can do a lock on the um, schedules, like so. And then we will simply just do a um, reset of the array, like so. Job done. Um, this uh, locks synchronization between th uh, threads uh, since the um, time mon monitor is running in a different thread than the one that's calling the clear method um, will prevent um, the clear method from being able to execute um, while the um, um, monitor schedules thread uh, is uh, doing any kind of work. Um, and we could potentially put that up here as well. Um, again, this ensures that uh, we don't end up with uh, desynchronized data. Um, would this be the one? Yes, there we go. Stuff that up here, like, like so. Wrong key. Um, there we go. Now we've got um, the ability to um, lock the other thread out until we're done doing whatever it is we need to do. Uh, so this will allow us to um, um, clear the schedule um, and in the add method we will do the same. So up here we'll do um, a lock on the schedule list and then move all this in here to ensure that uh, we have full control over the array um, when adding new entries to it. There we go. And in doing so, we now have options so that we can clear um, any existing um, schedules in the schedule manager and then simply re-add all of them uh, as needed. Um, this ensures that uh, we get rid of any um, um, schedules that um, might have existed but have had their timestamp changed which could cause desynchronization basically leaving an orphaned schedule in the schedule manager which we wouldn't be able to um, correctly access because we have no way of referencing it. So, um, all right. So, to update the schedule manager, <coughs> um, we'll start by um, clearing the um, schedule manager. So, uh, we've actually renamed it. Uh, now we'll let's see. Nah, we'll leave it at that. Uh, restart manager dot clear uh, then loop through all pr server profiles and add all schedules to the schedule manager so we shall need a counter for this um, that loops through all the server profiles um, uh, oh, sorry, count, like so, and then we need to keep in mind that we have to um, synchronize e each schedule uh, to the um, profile it belong, uh, server profile it belongs to. So um, we'll need to loop through the schedules within each um, uh, server profile 
profiles dot p dot schedules like so and then before we do that um, we kind of need to update um, the uh, schedule ID um, whether we need to update it here or not uh, doesn't really matter all that much because we've got uh, the schedules stored within the profiles themselves so it shouldn't be that huge of an issue for us to find find them when we need to cross link them so we'll take a quick look at the schedule manager uh, the schedule manager accepts um, the let's see this one uh, the server host ID which of course would be the ID of the server profile hour uh, and minute and a boolean indicating whether it's a back backup or restart event so uh, we can grab those directly restart manager dot add um, that would be the um, ID of um, the server profile and then uh, here we'll add in the hour of the um, there we go this one and um, same thing for the minutes of course uh, which would be event minutes and then finally we need to specify whether this is a uh, backup or restart event uh, which we do by specifying the backup flag that's it so just to make this more uh, readable there we go like so this one down here the uh, server host ID hour at which to trigger uh, the minute uh, at which to trigger uh, whether it's a backup um, event or a restart event there we go so this effectively takes care of um, adding all of the uh, clearing out and re-adding all of the um, schedules for all of the server profiles um, and um, making sure that uh, we get rid of any uh, potentially orphaned ones uh, by doing the clear at first and um, that should take care of um, handling all this for us. Now there are two um, places where we need to add a call to um, update the schedule manager and we should probably call it restart manager since um, that's what we called it here so yeah we'll do that uh, update restart manager instead there we go the first place where we need to um, call this method is um, right at uh, program startup um, which we can do here somewhere um, for example right after the form is shown there we go uh, the reason we do this is to ensure that um, the schedules are added to the restart manager um, uh, after they have been loaded from disk uh, the second place that we need to um, call this is in the schedule editor uh, which would be right about here there we go uh, since we potentially changed um, uh, some of the schedules uh, in the schedule editor uh, we will simply force a refresh of um, the restart manager and all the schedules in there um, and that will then uh, make sure that we get those uh, schedules um, properly synced up um, whenever something is changed as well as whenever this program starts up all right so um, that takes care of um, getting the schedules in there um, and um, we've 
still got, um, let's see, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm just checking my to-do list for today. Um, takes care of this entry. Um, so, what have we accomplished? Uh, we managed, managed to um, add in an option to remove um, schedules. Uh, we should be able to do that. Um, we actually haven't checked that yet, so let's give it a test run and see what happens. Okay, nothing particularly uh, went wrong, so um, let's see. We'll add in a new one here at, say, 1500 uh, for a restart. That's fine. Um, that should take care of saving it, and it did. And we'll go in and edit the um, schedule again and see if we can remove the restart thing. You are about to remove the restart schedule for 1500. Are you sure you wish to remove this schedule? Yes, please. And something didn't update correctly. Hmm. Good thing that we tested. Um, let's get rid of this. It actually removed it here, but it didn't update the um, um, list box correctly. So, we'll see if we can track down that bug. Uh, schedule dialog here, let's get some code. Okay, so, um, let's see what actually happens in the um, uh, closed schedule editor. Um, which we have right here. It just re-enables the schedule. It doesn't re repopulate it. So the reason the list box didn't get updated is because we didn't place a call to um, properly uh, repopulate it uh, when closing down the um, um, uh, schedule edit um, group um, F removing the entry, so we shall place a call here to populate the schedule list box and then see if we got the bug fixed. Okay, so two schedules are in there correctly as they should be. We'll do one for 1500 right here, save this one, it's in there. We'll exit this um, just to show you that it's actually correctly in there. There we go. And then uh, we'll go in and remove the schedule. Remove. Yes, please. And it got removed from the list box as well. Nice. And here again, the start event at 1800 got moved up and the 1500 uh, was gone. So that's working. Nice. All right. So. Um, Actually, this reminds me that um, <laughs> um, we still haven't implemented this um, neat little feature here. Um, we can't really remove um, any of the server profiles just yet uh, because we never got around to implementing that button. Um, so um, let's see if we can do something about that. All right. Um, to remove a server profile, we kind of need to do something similar to what we did in the schedule um, editor. Let's close down some of these quick. Um, that would be the schedule button, and this would be the remove button right here. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, um, we kind of already have the template for doing this uh, from the schedule editor. Um, basically, we just need to figure out exactly which one is selected, uh, ask a question, uh, expect uh, a yes or a no, um, and then uh, if we get a yes, um, basically just kill the entry. Um, it will be a little easier for us this time around because uh, the server profiles themselves are um, stored in a list rather than a um, an array. Um, and the neat thing about um, uh, lists is that it actually has a remove method, so we don't have to build anything specific for it. Um, all right, so. 
first let's figure out whether a uh, profile um, is actually selected. Um, and for that we have a variable in here somewhere um, which is called um, actually we'll just use this one see it has the reference right here profile selection index so if um, profile selection index is greater than negative one negative one indicating that nothing is selected um, then we will ask a question um, and that question would be something like uh, do you want to remove this server profile but um, like we did on the schedule editor uh, we'll build up a message so we can um, properly customize it with um, uh, a better reference than um, do you want to delete this um, do you want to delete this doesn't exactly um, explain uh, what this is um, so um, in a similar fashion, we'll build up a proper message for it and do it in a similar way um, as we did in the schedule editor. So uh, you are about to uh, delete the, no actually we said remove uh, the server profile uh, named and then um, we'll do a new line and a new line and then we'll add in um, escape so we can get uh, quotes and then uh, reference um, the actual um, profile uh, selection index and it has a name. Uh, this name is as far as I remember uh, the custom name that we can give each uh, profile uh, so um, we'll add that in there and get another couple of lines and then ask the question are you sh uh, sure you wish to remove this server profile there we go and this effectively puts up a um, Ah, okay, cool. Um, they'll hopefully figure out what's wrong. <laughs> um, this will effectively um, throw up a message box asking um, or informing us uh, which specific profile we uh, currently have selected and then asking us whether we're sure we want to remove this or, or not. Um, and it should look something like this. Of course with uh, the name put in there uh, from the actual profile list. <coughs> Next up we will uh, see if we can actually um, throw this um, message box up there and we will re uh, look for a yes response. So throw up the message um, and then remove server profile question mark and then we'll do the yes no. Um, there's no point in doing a yes no cancel because uh, cancel and no is basically the same so yes and no is uh, sufficient for this. And we'll do the question mark again. There we go. And that should be it. Okay so um, next up of course we need to um, figure out what to do in terms of removing um, said selected profile. Um, see one of the uh, neat things of having this as a list is that we can uh, use the remove at uh, method of the list object uh, to re remove this one specific in the, uh, ref um, entry as specified by its uh, list index number, which is exactly what we do with the profile selection index. So we will simply specify the profile select selection index as the entry to, to remove. And once we're done doing that, um, we um, need to save the changes, of course. And here we will force it and then we need to update the UI 
and we do that by invalidating the current UI. Uh, remove server profile that was selected. Force a save to disk and force an update of the UI by invalidating the current um, drawn version of the UI. There we go. Alright, so let's give this a test run and see what happens. Um, let's say we want to get rid of uh, Vanilla Heaven. Remove. You are about to remove the server profile named Vanilla Heaven. Are you sure you wish to remove this server profile? No, not yet. Let's see what happens if we select the Railcraft one and it correctly specifies to us that this is the profile we're asking about. Um, there we go. Let's kill Vanilla Heaven. Remove. Yep. And it was saved. The UI got updated. Let's check the config. Boom. Um, the one that's left is the Railcraft one, including its schedule. So we now have a remove button. All right, um, let's get the Vanilla Heaven back in there. Um, since these are read-only, um, Vanilla, that's the one we want to use. And 256, yeah, let's go with that. That should be enough. Um, nah, let's go 512, just because we can. And let's check the properties. Uh, these, of course, are loaded from the server properties file, uh, s and since we didn't make any changes there, um, all of this stuff is just like we left it before. Um, and there we have it back. Nice. Alright, so, that takes care of yet another um, point on my um, to-do list for today, remove server profiles. We can now remove them, we can add in new ones. Um, one thing that might be nice if we could do that uh, would be if we could um, perhaps sort um, uh, the order in which these are uh, server profiles are shown. Um, uh, we could, uh, at, at the moment, it's just showing the um, um, there we go. Um, it's just showing the um, server profiles in the order that we added them, um, as is evident by uh, what it looks like now. Um, we could do some, I don't know, drag and drop option to let the user um, sort them in a different order um, if needed. Uh, we could do a sort by name. Um, we could do a sort by port number, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, there are plenty of different ways that we can sort this. Um, whether we want to add in uh, such a sort option for this uh, or not, uh, well, could be a little bit overkill, uh, could become an annoyance that we can't sort them. Uh, for now, we'll leave that as a possible feature for the future. Um, it's not vitally important as long as we basically only have two profiles. Um, and in um, those regards, we actually have um, kind of a UI size problem, which this should show perfectly. Um, we haven't accounted for this. Uh, we haven't accounted for the ability to scroll through uh, basically too many profiles. Um, Again, it's a feature that we can add in the future um, to run just a couple of instances. Uh, the current UI is sufficient, I guess. Um, okay. Um, now, um, we could do, <coughs> excuse me, um, we could do one more um, feature for the um, schedule stuff. Now at the moment um, the only thing that we really can do is uh, specify that um, 
um, the server should be restarted or shut down for backup and then restarted um, but uh, we don't really have any means of specifying that um, the server launches should automatically start the servers um, when the application launches um, and that might be a feature that we want to put in here um, whether we should put it here in the um, root core uh, configuration of the server profile we probably want to put it in here just put a checkbox that says auto, res uh, auto start um, um, or we could put it as part of the schedule I think logically it would be uh, make more sense to put it uh, as part of the um, core uh, server settings um, and in doing so we also need to um, figure out a way to uh, get that working um, and also di to disable um, the auto start uh, sequence if the server was manually stopped as in um, servers running and the stop button is being clicked uh, so that's something that we need to incorporate in the auto start uh, stuff um, when we get to that point. Uh, for now we'll go update the uh, config stuff and that also of course means that we need to add in another entry in our uh, uh, configuration file. Um, so let's go through this stuff and see if we can get that done. Uh, that will be the start button. Um, yeah, this should be fine. All right, get rid of this, and then we'll go fetch the. Um, uh, let's see, this is that one. So that one. All right. In here, um, <coughs> we will put in a checkbox. Uh, like so and then see about getting it updated so we can um, uh, here uh, auto start and we actually need to update the four color to be I believe this one yep there we go um, Auto start um, this server like so. Now we have the checkbox. Um, let's see. Put it here. Looks fine. And then we need to uh, mess with the server profile because this one. No, not that one. Yeah, we need this one as well. This is the one we need. Um, here we need to put in a flag that determines whether um, this particular server uh, should be auto restarted or not. Um, so um, we'll add in a uh, auto start flag. So um, auto start, there we go. And then we need to be able to configure that as well. So. Um, since that's a kind of vital um, piece of information, uh, we'll add it as part of the um, initial setup. Um, here, uh, auto start equals auto start. There we go. And instantly we get like a gazillion, uh, hey, I can't do this. Yep, I know. Um, let's see, the server profile config and the config dialog. Um, those are actually exactly the places where we need to um, make the updates. So that would be part of the uh, load and save for the config file as well as the uh, dialog um, so we can get these set up correctly. Okay, um, to get this out of the way let's start by um, updating the uh, configuration save and here we will add in um, some mean uh, some means of uh, storing whether to auto start this um, and in a similar fashion to how we did the um, backup um, scheduled backup uh, referencing um, by means of backup or defaulting to restart um, we'll do a setup uh, that's very similar to it. 
So here we will um, do a check uh, to see if this particular profile has an auto start setup. Um, and um, if it does, then we will set a value for the profile. Uh, to string, um, put a key name in here called um, uh, startup mode, and then do um, auto. And if it's not set, then we'll do manual. There we go. <coughs> here, um, when we load it, uh, we'll do uh, a similar setup to uh, the backup. We'll check if uh, the first letter is A, and only in the instance where uh, the first letter is A, of the startup mode key within the profile, uh, will we actually set it to automatically start up. Um, so this takes care of one entry, and up here in the load, uh, we shall fetch it quick. And since we called it um, startup mode, that's what we'll call it here. Config any get value profile from the profile itself, and we need the um, startup mode key, and we'll trim it just in case. All right, and here we'll do auto start equals false. And then we'll do a quick check if uh, startup mode has a length greater than zero. And uh, the first letter of uh, startup mode, and we need to do one more thing, uh, equals an A. Um, then we will set auto start to uh, true. <sighs> Stupid Visual Studio. Uh, we need to make sure that we get lowercase letters. There we go. Uh, now that we have a flag that we can pass, we shall do so. Auto start there. That takes care of one of the um, IntelliSense whinings, um, like so. And then we shall uh, go investigate the other ones. Now, this one is for a um, empty profile, so that definitely doesn't need to restart automatically. And the second one is during the accept um, button click event when we store the data. And luckily, lucky for us, um, this is fairly straightforward because we can simply grab the checked event of um, the checkbox and pass that um, because that will then be true or false. The last thing we need to do is to actually update the auto start uh, checkbox when uh, the dialog is shown and for that I believe we have a method that um, populates uh, all of this stuff. Um, let's see. Dum, 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 dum. Um, shown, which is right here, um, and then we shall do the check auto start dot checked equals profile dot auto start. There we go. That takes care of updating the UI uh, with whatever sa settings were saved to disk, and we now have a new configured uh, configuration option. So let's have a look. Uh, let's set this to auto start and check the um, settings file. Uh, the Railcraft one is set to startup mode manual because it, we basically haven't configured it, so it defaults back to manual mode. And Vanilla Heaven is now set to auto start, um, just like we specified. We'll check the um, Um, huh? Oh, interesting. Something went wrong with uh, this setup. For some reason it's not showing the dialogue again. That was weird. 
Um, so, why is it not showing the... Uh, let's get rid of these quick. There we go. Main form. Um, this would be the edit button and possibly because of this um, or because of a host index missing perhaps could be um, this shows up just fine and for some reason it just decided that um, it didn't want to <laughs> That was weird. Hmm. Well. Ah, interesting. So, something goes wrong when um, we actually do the changes and save the changes to disk. Interesting. So, the question then becomes, um, what exactly went wrong? Um, some kind of lag somewhere um, isn't getting uh, updated correctly or um, the indexing is incorrect possibly the um, host ID uh, might be incorrect uh, and thereby um, not correctly showing up um, uh, definitely something that we need to uh, look into but um, I think we need a quick break first uh, I know that I need one, uh, so I shall be back in a few.